For decades, Toyota has churned out many impressive and reliable engines, including engines that last a million miles, and engines that can pump out 700 horsepower. Today we're looking at five of the most reliable engines ever made by Toyota and Lexus. Let's start off with the Lexus LFA. It's a two-seat luxury sports car Lexus made in 2012, and unfortunately the line lasted just one year in the market. But the engine was another story. It took Lexus almost 10 years to develop the LFA. Lexus finally debuted it in October 2009, and Akio Toyota presented it himself. Under the hood of the LFA was a V10 engine. The name of the engine was the 1LRGUE, and it was hailed as a Japanese masterpiece with arguably one of the best sounding engines to come out of a production car. The reason is, it was co-developed with Yamaha Motor, who developed the acoustic design concept. Let me tell you why it's one of the greatest V10 engines of all time. First of all, it wasn't necessarily its output, which was 553 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque, which translates to 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. But Toyota's goal wasn't to create the highest performing engine. Instead, it was to give drivers one of the lightest, best sounding, and most advanced V10s ever. I'm talking about high tech construction and high revving capability. The 1LR GUE was a 4.8 liter naturally aspirated V10, but it was compact, smaller than previous Lexus V8s in fact, and weighed lighter than a conventional V6. It ran smoothly and had a 72 degree angle between two banks of cylinders for better balance and lightweight construction. The engine got its oxygen supply through a dual stage variable intake manifold. This thing could rev up from idle to redline in just 0.6 seconds. In fact, it's a world record for a production car in 2012. Strange Strangely enough, no analog tachometer could keep up with it, so Toyota had to create a digital alternative. The LFA was Lexus's halo car. In other words, a car built by a brand to remind customers what the brand is all about. And there's a ton of extra carbon fiber in the car. I'm talking carbon fiber chassis, carbon fiber hood, even a carbon fiber steering wheel. Well, the LFA finally came to the market in 2012, but here's the thing, it was a bit late to the game. By then, fancy sports cars like Nissan GTR, Chevy Corvette ZR1, and Lamborghini Murcielago were already on the market. Just look at the GTR, for example. This Japanese-made sports car was arguably a better performing sports car, but it also happened to be five times cheaper than the LFA. But there were other issues too. Because Lexus took so long to design the LFA, there were some design decisions that were too late to go back on. For example, the transmission was a six-speed single clutch, but it really should have been a dual clutch transmission. Plus, the price tag was 350000 bucks, which is expensive even by today's dollar. But mind you, this was 11 years ago. Another complication is that even if you had that kind of cash, Lexus initially didn't allow consumers to buy the LFA but you had to lease it from Lexus instead. All this is to say the LFA failed as a production car. Only about 500 were ever made, and even then the dealerships didn't sell those out. Another great Toyota engine is the 4AGE. It's an inline Ford that actually came out in 1983. It was small, light, and nimble like a bee, capable of reaching crazy revs and horsepower figures. The first generation found its way under the hood of the 1983 Toyota Corolla. Actually, it was one of the first Japanese mass-produced engines with dual overhead camshaft and four valves per cylinder. The engine evolved to later become one of the first five valve per cylinder engines ever made when the 20 valve silver top was produced eight years later in 1991. In total, the 4 AGE saw five generations before it was discontinued in 2000. The most well-known car with its engine under the hood was the cultural icon, the Toyota Corolla AE86. But it also powered cars like Celica, Corona, and Sprinter at one time or another. The engine also made it into cartoon animation. The 4 AGE engine featured in the popular street racing Japanese Magnum anime series Initial D. Next up is the Toyota 2GRFE engine. This is one of Toyota's lesser known performance engines, but it still deserves a spot on today's list in my opinion. The 3.5 liter V6 was introduced back in 2004, nearly 20 years ago. The 2GRFE replaced the previous 1MZFE V6 engines and inline 6 2JZ engines. After its introduction, the engine quickly became a core part across multiple Toyota vehicles like Camry, Highlander, Avalon, Venza, and the RAV4. Soon it was also used in other vehicles like the electric. Lexus, IS350, GS350, RX350, and more. Lotus also used the supercharged 2 GRFE in the Lota Evora S and XZS vehicles, and at present we see it in the Lotus Amira. 
This engine is naturally aspirated and it outputs 295 to 314 horsepower and 248 to 260 pound-feet of torque. So you can see this engine is small but mighty and it's earned a reputation for its reliability and being built to last. Just like the Toyota 1 GRFE engine, the 2 GRFE has an open deck type cast aluminum alloy cylinder block with spiny type cast iron cylinder liners, known as the sleeves. But unlike the 1 GR, the 2 GR was created for transverse mounting. This mounted could be used in front wheel drive vehicles. The 2 GR was almost 7 pounds lighter than the 1 GR. Next, we have the Toyota 2JZ GTE engine. This is an inline six, and I'm talking air intercooled, twin turbocharged, belt driven, dual overhead camshaft, cast iron block cylinder, aluminum head, designed and manufactured by Toyota. Here in the US, it was available in the super turbo models as early as 1993 till 1998. But over in Japan, the 2JZ GTE engine was first introduced in 1991 in the Toyota Aristo. Because this is an inline six engine, the primary and secondary forces that are generated by the movement of the pistons cancel each other out. This makes for a naturally smooth running and balanced engine. Plus, it also allows for extra space in the engine bay if you ever wanted to install bigger turbos. The 2JZ shares some similarities with the Nissan RB26DETT inline six. Unlike V type engines, half of the block's rotated assembly doesn't get thrown around in the opposite directions. Instead, the 2JZ, its three front cylinders do the opposite of the rear. So we're talking an even distribution of weight, and that means the typical polar rocking motion you find in a V6 engine is not there. Instead, the 2JZ can rev higher, longer, safer, and smoother. Speaking of revving and power, the 2JZ GTE inline six engine is also well known for its ability to double power levels. This engine can pump out 700 horsepower and somehow still stay in one piece. Now that's impressive. It's possible because it's built out of heavier duty or cast iron instead of aluminum. It has a solid deck to ward off cylinder movements and it's stuffed inside a forged crank. Because the cylinder head itself is aluminum, it's lightweight and also enables faster heat dissipation. The pistons are also cast aluminum and have slight dish tops. Because of this, the 2JZ GTE has a lower compression ratio. On top of that, seven main caps keep the crank from shifting. Under piston oil squirters also cool the rotating assembly and keep it lubricated at high RPMs. Of course, no engine is perfect, and the 2JZ GTE is no exception. Some disadvantages of this engine, including things like the oil pump seal possibly blowing out, a poor flowing cylinder head, a failure prone sequential turbo system, and failure prone timing belt tensioner brake. Last but not least is one of the most popular V8 engines Toyota ever built, and that's the 2UZFE. This engine is known for its solid balance of performance and reliability. It was a 4.7 liter V8 engine that made its debut in 1989. It outputs something like 228 to 271 horsepower, depending on the car model and year. Originally, Toyota designed this engine to replace the outdated Toyota 5V engine. You can find two UZFE engines under the hoods of vehicles like the Lexus GX470 and LX470. You can also fit it in older models of the Toyota Land Cruiser, Forerunner, Tundra, and Sequoia. But you won't find any modern Toyotas with this engine because Toyota discontinued it back in 2013. This is also the same engine that made the famous Million Mile Tundra. Story goes that a man by the name of Victor Shepard bought a new 2007 Tundra with the 2UZ FE engine. He told the general manager of the Toyota dealership, Ron Weimer, he was going to put a million miles on it. Ron played along, but the truth is, Ron didn't really think it had happened. Fast forward nine years, the truck's odometer hit 999,999 miles and stopped counting. Victor thought the truck was going to turn over. He took it to the dealership to get it inspected, but there was nothing wrong with the truck. The odometer just didn't have a way to track any more miles. Just goes to show even Toyota didn't think it would make it to a million miles. Anyway, Victor started using the trip odometer to keep track. Ultimately, the truck reached more than 1,020,000 miles before the Toyota dealership offered Victor a brand new 2016 Tundra double cab in exchange for his million mile. Toyota then took the old 2007 Tundra, tore it down, and examined all the nuts and bolts to see how to improve future versions to make it last even longer. Of course, I can't talk about great Toyota engines without making a special mention of Toyota hybrid cars. Here's the thing about hybrid vehicles. Hybrid cars are actually more reliable than convention gas power cars and they have the potential to last a long time. There are a few reasons for this. If you look inside a hybrid vehicle, there's a traditional internal combustion engine and at least one electric motor or generator unit. First of all, an electric motor doesn't have as many moving parts compared to internal combustion engines. Because of this, you usually see a hybrid vehicle's electric motor lasting longer than the rest of the vehicle. 
As well, when you hit the accelerator pedal in a stationary hybrid vehicle, it's the electric motor that gets it going. Just think, an electric motor makes its maximum torque from zero RPM instantaneously. This also gives the internal combustion engine time to start up and reach optimal RPM before it takes over at higher speeds. This is how the electric motor reduces wear and tear on the internal combustion engine and extends the life of the internal combustion engine. Hybrid vehicles excel in stop and go driving. That's why the Ford Maverick Hybrid, for example, offers better fuel economy in city driving than on the highway. Or take a look at the new 2023 Ford F-150 Hybrid. If you invest in the expensive Power Boost upgrade, but you drive mainly on highways, Power Boost upgrade would probably never pay for itself. But if you're mostly driving in the city, you can see the upgrade pay for itself eventually if you own the truck for long enough. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that hybrids are perfect. In general, they're more expensive to make, and they require a high voltage traction battery to store the energy the electric motor captures through regenerative braking. As the battery wears out over time, the hybrid vehicle becomes less efficient. Later, when it needs to be replaced, you're looking at thousands of dollars in battery replacement costs. But the good news is that the traction batteries in many hybrids today can last 100,000 or even 150,000 miles. Toyota's current generation hybrid system has come a long way since the first generation. The Camry Hybrid, for example, now is a bigger engine. And there's also more room to put more under the hood, like a 12-volt battery, for example. There's another improvement which has to do with the battery. For decades, the batteries in Toyota's hybrids were heavy and took up way too much space. But with this new generation, Toyota has been incorporating lithium-ion batteries that are lighter. For example, the nickel metal hydrate battery in a Prius weighs 85 to 86 pounds. In a similar model with a much more powerful lithium-ion battery, you're looking at a weight of only 52 pounds. That's a 30 pound difference. The less weight your hybrid has to lug around, the more efficient it is. Toyota also made its batteries more compact to allow even more space for other necessary components. Take the 2022 Camry Hybrid, for example. The trunk looks pretty standard, but if you look deeper, you'll see that the battery that was hogging all the space behind the seat is now hidden under the back seat. But now you tell me, what do you think is the most reliable Toyota engine? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.